Around the turn of the 19th century, there were hundreds of reports from reputable sources of giant skeletons unearthed from ancient burial mounds across America. Human giants are not entirely a product of legend in our history. With the extreme rarity of giantism affecting roughly three in a million, it's surprising how often giants are spoken of in the Bible and North American folklore. David and Goliath, Jack and the Beanstalk, and Paul Bunyan are familiar examples of tales involving giants. But while these are thought to be myths or legends, is there any possibility that a race of giants once existed or were their humanoid ancestors significantly larger than us? According to Paiute oral history, the Ka or Sahi are a legendary tribe of red-haired cannibalistic giants, the remains of which were allegedly found in 1911 by guano miners in Nevada's Lovelock Cave. Furthermore, the Paiute creation story tells of beautiful giants who once lived between the Sierra Nevadas and the Rocky Mountains. After giving birth to a disfigured child, the giants treated the child so poorly that the Great Spirit responded by making the land hot and desolate and allowing enemies to conquer the giants. Only two giants survived, Paiute and his wife, both of whose skin became brown from eternally living in the hot desert. Aztec mythology features Quintamensin, a race of giant men created in one of the previous solar eras. They are credited with the construction of Teotihuacan. Giants appear in folklore of cultures worldwide as they represent a relatively simple concept, representing the human body enlarged to the point of being monstrous. Giants evoked terror and remind humans of their body's frailty and morality. They are often portrayed as monsters and antagonists, but there are exceptions. Some giants intermingle with humans in a friendly way and can even be part of human families with their offspring being portrayed as regular humans. In folklore from all over Europe, Giants were believed to have built the remains of previous civilizations. A Danish historian thought giants had a hand in the creation of megalithic monuments. Similarly, the old English poem Seafair speaks of the high stone walls that were the work of giants. Natural geologic features such as the massive basalt columns of the Giant's Causeway on the coast of Northern Ireland were attributed to construction by giants. Many giants in English folklore were noted for their stupidity. Other English stories told of how giants threw stones at each other, which were used to explain many great stones on the landscape. Giants figure in folklore and fairy tales, such as Jack and the Giant Killer, the giant who had no heart in his body, Nix Not Nothing, Robin Hood, and the Prince of Argon. Young Ronald and Paul Bunyan. Orgs are humanoid creatures, sometimes of gigantic stature, that occur in various sorts of European folklore. Is it possible that many of these folklore tales are based on actual events? Could a race of giants have once lived around the world and in North America? There is evidence to suggest they did. In western Nevada, on the outskirts of the Humboldt Sink, is a small cave. It's hot and dry and isolated, but wasn't always so. It was once part of enormous Lake Tehatan, 
and Pleistocene epoch lakes some 13,000 years ago, and at the time, one of North America's largest lakes. But it eventually dried up, leaving a number of smaller lakes, among which was Humboldt Lake. The cave was on its shore, and in it lived a race of natives who hunted and fished and enjoyed a life of plenty. But there's a shocking twist. Researching these people, you'll find that the archaeological and historical evidence tells us they were not common Native Americans. They were the Sitaka, a race of red-haired giants, ten feet tall, who terrorized their neighbors with cannibalism. The cave is real, and you can drive to it via a long dirt road from nearby Lovelock, Nevada a small farming town that has grown amidst the moist soil of the sink. The stories are real too. All you need to do is Google for red-haired giants and you'll find a raft of websites repeating the same tale. Guano miners in the cave found so many relics that in 1912 they turned the site over to a University of California anthropologist who recovered thousands of artifacts. You'll find that oral traditions passed down by Paiute Indians tells how they eventually defeated the Sitaka giants by trapping them inside their cave and smoking them to death with fire. And you'll read how the recovered artifacts included human bones split open for their marrow and bearing the marks of stone knives. What you won't find is any record of these alleged giant bones having ever been preserved for study. Some say that they're being covered up or deliberately hidden away in locked cabinets and secure sections of museum collections. But most sources that discuss the stories speculate that the bones were simply lost over time. It's a fact that early excavations of Lovelock Cave were exceedingly destructive and unscientific in the extreme. Who were these red-haired giants, and is there any evidence remaining today of their bones or artifacts that would prove they were indeed giants? The Nephilim are mysterious beings or people in the Hebrew Bible who are large and strong. The word Nephilim is loosely translated as giants in some translations of the Hebrew Bible, but left untranslated in others. Jewish explanations interpret them as hybrid sons of fallen angels. In Genesis, it says the Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. The same were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. Now this appears to suggest that there was a race of giants in the past, before our recorded history, and they were considered to be mighty, and they contributed to the human race. Also, that they did exist into our recorded history and were referred to by many translations. In the book of Numbers, it says, And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come of the Nephilim, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Again, we see a reference that they were very large, and their human hybrid offspring were large too. So if these giants did exist, and they appear not only in the Bible, but in other ancient texts as well, could there be some artifacts, bones or remains of their existence? Perhaps there is, and it has either been hidden away or remains today in plain sight, but has been misinterpreted. During the turn of the century, in the early 1900s, there were a multitude of discoveries throughout America. 
Newspaper articles carried stories of huge human remains being unearthed around the nation and excavated in mounds and tombs of ancient people. Today, it's difficult to find this information because much of this proof no longer exists. However, many of the newspaper articles have been preserved and tell a tale of giants who once walked the land in North America. In January 1841, an article appeared describing bones and a skull discovered on the eastern shore of Pascagoula Bay in Jackson County, Mississippi, near its mouth are the ruins of an ancient fortification, built apparently many centuries ago. It appears to have been constructed chiefly of seashells, and within this ruin, several feet below the surface, have been found charred coals and fragments of a particular kind of earthenware together with many human bodies. Among them were discovered parts of a human skeleton of gigantic proportions. The upper part of the skull was said to be sufficiently large to fit loosely over the largest modern head. Again in October 1845, an article was printed, the Madison Banner states on the most reliable authority that a person in Franklin County, Tennessee, while digging a well, found a human skeleton at the depth of 50 feet, which measures 18 feet in length. The immense frame was entire with an unimported exception in one of the legs. It's been visited by several of the principal members of the medical facility in Nashville and pronounced unequivocally by all the skeleton of a huge man. The bone of the thigh measures five feet and it was computed that the height of the living man making the proper allowance for muscles must have been at least 20 feet tall. In 1845, near Franklin, Tennessee, a Mr. Shoemate was digging a well and at 60 feet discovered a skeleton measuring over 18 feet high. It was said a coffee mug could fit in the eye socket of the skull. The bones of the thigh and leg measure 6 feet 6 inches. And in 1856, the Boston Medical and Surgical Journal carried an article regarding giants found. Western Giants in Their Slumber, the Burlington, Iowa State Gazette, says that while some workmen were engaged in excavating for the cellar of Governor Grimes' new building on the corner of Main and Valley Streets, they came upon an arched vault some 10 feet square, which on being opened, was found to contain eight human skeletons of gigantic proportions. The walls of the vault were about 14 inches thick, well laid up with cement or indestructible mortar. The vault is about six feet deep from base to the arch. The skeletons are in a good state of preservation and we venture to say are the largest human remains ever found, being a little over eight feet long. Numerous articles about giant human skeletons found continued until 1922. What happened to all these bones? Where did they end up? Where can you go to see them? the answer may be more disturbing than the discoveries themselves. Throughout the past few years, there were numerous claims that the Smithsonian Museum either hid, destroyed, or in some way withheld the fact that large human remains were discovered in North America. The Smithsonian feverly denies this, and this notion has been debunked by several reputable fact-checker organizations over time. However, rumors and research continues to emerge that proclaims the museum was involved, though it is becoming harder to prove anything as time goes by. Some still say there is a conspiracy to hide the evidence,
or at one time there was. Be that as it may, there are no museums showcasing large human remains over seven to eight feet tall. If organizations in the past did not hide or destroy the evidence, then either there was no evidence or it disappeared through some other means. It's difficult to believe there was no evidence since it can be proven that a multitude of newspapers carried stories and reported in-depth on discoveries from 1840 to 1922. So where are all the bones? We can surmise a few possibilities of what may have happened. Collectors who purchased these remains at the time of their discovery passed away and their collections were lost or discarded. Some who discovered bones may have simply returned them to the earth when their amusement or profitability faded away. For decades, no one was looking for large bones and they were considered irrelevant. One would assume a large skull would have been kept though, and a few of these are in museums and scientific study facilities around the globe though none of them are large enough to pass a mug through the eye socket. Some may have been discarded if they were thought to be mastodon or animal bones, and many were likely misidentified. For whatever reason, there is little evidence of giant skeletons and bones remaining today, and current laws forbid the digging in or around native burial grounds and locations or tombs that may contain such evidence, so no new discoveries are being made. What we do have is a few early photographs of these remains and the stories and eyewitness testimonies from the discoverers, those who did see them when they were on display. It may be frustrating that there are no museums showcasing giant skeletons in America, but that is not the end of the road for the concept of giants that roam the earth. We still have legends, written records, a few photographs, and a multitude of eyewitness accounts that remains have been found and that giants were fairly common in times past. There is a multitude of fake giant images floating around the internet. Many were produced during a contest a few years ago and appear to depict giant skeletons being unearthed around the globe. Some site locations and people who were alleged witnesses also. It's buyer beware when searching for actual photos. However, there are a few real photographs taken when giant skeletons were discovered or were on display. These photographs do show what appears to be the actual skeleton and skulls from excavations around the globe. A diligent search reveals a few of these artifacts that prove some were indeed discovered. A human skeleton of phenomenal size was uncovered during the excavation of a prehistoric site located in the city of Chang'an, Shan Province, China in 2006. The skeleton dates to 4,000 years, corresponding to the Longshan culture. The skeletal characteristics point to a young male 16 to 18 years old with a height of 6.3 feet that's large for a Chinaman. This is the tallest skeleton ever discovered in prehistoric China and thus was named the Longshan Giant. The giant appears to be of the Mongoloid race and has many physical characteristics that are similar to those of modern Southern Asians. Upon closer examination, three drilled holes were found to the right of the bone of the skull no rationale exists yet to explain the presence of these holes. The giant of Castelnau refers to three bone fragments, a humerus, tibia, 
and femoral mid shaft discovered by George Vancher de Lapong in 1890 in the sediment used to cover a Bronze Age burial and dating possibly back to the Neolithic. According to him, the fossil bones may belong to one of the largest humans known to have existed. He estimated from the bone size that the human may have been 11 feet 6 inches tall. No modern peer-reviewed study has been published about the alleged giant bone fragments. Make no mistake, giantism does exist. Giantism is a condition characterized by excessive growth and height, significantly above average. In humans, this condition is caused by overproduction of growth hormone in childhood, resulting in people 8 to 9 feet in height. Andre the Giant is a known example of a man with superhuman proportions and strength, reaching 7 feet 4 inches tall. But Andre's size was the result of giantism and disorders caused by an overactive pituitary gland, which releases too much growth hormone. And with the average human height of 5 feet 6 inches for men and 5 feet 2 inches for women, it's rare to find someone in Andre's height, let alone his stature. With the extreme rarity of giantism affecting roughly three in a million, it's surprising how often giants are spoken of in the Bible and North American folklore. David and Goliath, Jack and the Beanstalk, Paul Bunyan are familiar examples of tales involving giants. But while these are thought to be myths or legends, is there any possibility that a race of giants once existed or were their humanoid ancestors significantly larger than us? Across the United States, there are burial mounds, or at least their remnants, some as extensive in size as the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Cahokia and Monks Mounds in Illinois and Missouri are two thought to have been built before the arrival of Columbus. The Cahokia Mound is 100 feet tall with a 14-acre base, almost an entire acre larger than the Pyramid of Giza. Monk's Mound is just as tall with a 1,000-foot base, but what makes these and other mounds of their kind even more intriguing is what has been found buried inside them. Jim Vieira has made it his mission to explore the mystery behind these mounds and others where there is documentation of unearthed skeletons, often of gigantic proportions. He's a stonemason by trade and found himself intrigued after finding a plethora of mysterious stone mounds throughout New England. He found that the construction and particularly the stone work of these mounds was impressive considering the level of technology at the time. He also noticed that the orientation of the mounds was such that the entrances faced a direction that was in alignment with the sun during equinoxes. The mounds were built with massive stones and were present long before colonists from Europe crossed over. Vieira uncovered old reports in New England of giant skeletons unearthed from these mounds, often with two rows of teeth and jaws that could fit over the head of a normal-sized human. The skeletons ranged in length from 7 to 10 feet tall. While this may sound ridiculous at first glance, it was not an isolated incident and is supported by reports from reputable news sources of the time. Discoveries of the giant skeletons were found all over the Northeast, from Martha's Vineyard and Deerfield Valley, Massachusetts, to Vermont and upstate New York. Other reports of the discovery of buried giants were also found in the South, Midwest, and West Coast. In the Ohio River Valley, a report from a local paper that was backed up by Scientific American found bodies of several giants buried under a 10-foot-tall mound. 
One female skeleton was found holding a three and a half foot long child. Another of the giant skeletons was buried in a clay coffin and an engraved stone tablet was also recovered. This particular mound was 64 feet long by 35 feet wide. The Chickasaba Mound in Arkansas is another instance of the uncovering of a giant skeleton under similar circumstances. The 12 square mile mound had its name taken from the chief of the Shawnee tribe, who was essentially known to be a giant with incredible strength. Chief Chickasaba lived in that area of Arkansas, and when the mound was uncovered, the skeleton of a massive human being was found. Subsequently, other skeletons up to 10 feet tall were unearthed in the same area, all with similar burial artifacts found with them. Some reports claim the length of the skeleton's legs to be 5 feet alone. Other reports show large craniums of skeletons with double rows of teeth. While stories of this nature sound fantastical, there are numerous reports of skeletons of the same size appearing in newspaper articles from the New York Times and other reputable sources. The majority of these reports occur during the mid to late 19th century, which Vieira sees as being the turning point in a censored narrative that has now dominated our history textbooks. He says he thinks that awareness of both the mounds and giants was common knowledge during this primarily agrarian time. There's even supposed reference to it from Abraham Lincoln in a written account of a speech that he was preparing to give at Niagara Falls, he wrote, The eyes of that species of extinct giants, whose bones filled the mounds of America, have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. Vieira believes that a prejudiced narrative was created to discredit Native Americans or portray them as savages because if they were seen as having built the mounds, it would show them as mathematically and technically advanced. He says he thinks that the removal of any evidence of the giants might have occurred because they wouldn't fit into the controlled narrative of Manifest Destiny. Subsequently, many of the mounds were allowed to be destroyed by settlers and farmers as America was colonized with no regard to the reverence that the natives held for them. And whether the tall skeletons belong to a race of giant natives themselves or another race that predated them is unknown, but it is thought that the American Indians venerated them. Throughout history, all around the globe, we find stories of giants. Biblical references and ancient texts speak of them. It was common knowledge in times past. The Book of Numbers includes the discouraging report by the spies who Moses sent into Khan. We can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. All the people we saw there are of giant size. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. However, the book of Joshua described the actual conquest of Canaan in a later generation. It makes no reference to such people living there. The Bible also tells of Gog and Magog, who later entered European folklore, and of the famous battle between David and the Philistine Goliath. While Goliath is often portrayed as a giant in the retellings of the biblical narrative, he appears to be significantly smaller than other giants, biblical or otherwise. The Masoretic text version of the book of Samuel gives his height as six cubits in one span, which is possibly 10 foot 3 inches to 12 foot 2 inches. While the first century Jewish historian Flavius Josephus and the second first centuries BCE Dead Sea Scrolls give Goliath's height as four cubits and one span, which is seven foot 
to eight foot tall. Josephus also described the Amorites as giants in his Antiquities of the Jews, indicating that some sort of fossils may have been on display at that time, for which reason they removed their camp to Hebron, and when they had taken it, they slew all the inhabitants. There were till then left the race of giants, who had bodies so large and continences so entirely different from other men that they were surprising to the sight and terrible to the hearing. The bones of these men are still shown to this very day, unlike to any credible relations of other men. The Book of Enoch describes giants as the offspring of watchers and women. In folklore from all over Europe, giants were believed to have built the remains of previous civilizations. The Danish historian Saxo Grammatus thought giants had a hand in the creation of megalithic monuments. Similarly, the old English poem Seafair speaks of the high stone walls that were the work of giants. Natural geologic features, such as the massive basalt columns of the Giant's Causeway on the coast of Northern Ireland, were attributed to construction by giants. The Nephilim are mysterious beings or people in the Hebrew Bible who are large and strong. The word Nephilim is loosely translated as giants in some translations of the Hebrew Bible, but left untranslated in others. Jewish explanations interpret them as hybrid sons of fallen angels. The main reference to them is in Genesis, but the passage is ambiguous, and the identity of the Nephilim is disputed. According to the Book of Numbers, they later inhabited Canaan at the time of the Israelite conquest. A similar or identical Biblical Hebrew term read as Nephilim by some scholars or as the word fallen by others appears in the Book of Ezekiel. Marco Polo wrote of encountering giants in Zanzibar who were so strong they can carry as many as four ordinary men. Mid-20th century journalist Glenn D. Kettler said of the Watusi tribe east of the Congo, men towering seven or eight feet are a common sight. Throughout history, giants appear, not as fanciful stories or metaphor, but as real living beings. If these giants did exist, there should be some record of them. Bones have been found and apparently discarded, many thought to be the bones of dinosaurs and were misinterpreted. However, bones may not be the only evidence left behind. Is it possible that some of the gigantic monuments still standing today could have been the work of giants? Imagine our world long ago when the Great Pyramid of Giza and Stonehenge were young. The freshly cut stones are smooth to the touch without the erosion and decay that will eventually besiege them. Their towering architecture rises into the sky as a beacon of human ingenuity and accomplishment. Megalithic structures are found all over the world, from South America heading east to Japan, and just about everywhere in between. Is it possible that giants, ancient giants, built some of these towering structures? Construction of the Great Pyramid and the megalithic foundation at Baalbek Temple Complex in Lebanon still stump scientists. If giants existed, they would naturally have an advantage over a typical man in constructing large megalithic structures. In 1901, in the world's history, a survey of man's record, Han Fernanden Holmut and James Bryce wrote, for the erection of these in their present position without the technical resources at the disposal of modern builders, human strength appears inadequate. In popular opinion, only giants could have made such structures. 
However, archaeologists have found intriguing imagery in the reliefs at the tombs of Rekmar in Luxor. One image shows two men herding a giraffe. What's odd about the image is that the men are of nearly equal stature to the giraffe. An elephant is also shown as smaller than the men, and leopards and baboons seem to be proportionally smaller. It's difficult to tell, however, as oxen are shown to be of normal size in relation to the men. Although most of the men depicted in the facades of equal stature to each other, there are a few images where some figures loom over others. The smaller figures may represent children rather than smaller men. Some of these figures appear in construction scenes carrying blocks and donning soldier harnesses. Were the artists and craftsmen of these reliefs depicting giants building ancient structures? Rechmeyer was mayor of Thebes. He may have overseen many construction projects during his tenure as both mayor and visor. It's also possible that while he was under the pharaoh, he was privy to ancient knowledge, which could have included knowledge about giants if they existed, and other secrets from remote history. These may have been depicted in his tomb. In 1988, Gregor Spori went to Egypt as an amateur researcher interested in the pyramids. According to an article he wrote, he made an interesting giant-related discovery. A local introduced him to a farmer whose ancestors were tomb robbers. Artifacts had been passed down in his family, some sold at intervals, to buy land and other assets. One strange artifact that this man had and was guarding jealously was a decaying giant finger. The finger measured just over a foot long, and Spori took pictures of it. But he could not find this man when he returned to Egypt in 2009 to search again for the relic. And during the 1988 visit, he insisted that he would not part with the finger. Also, there is the Easter Island heads. The mystery surrounding these giant heads not only leads bold investigators to consider the possibility that they depict giants with elongated faces and heavily pronounced jaws, but also introduces a variety of equally bold theories including the possibility of sunken continents and advanced prehistoric civilizations. Easter Island is considered one of the most remote locations in the world, sitting almost halfway between New Zealand and South America in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Some wonder if a lost civilization left these artifacts in this now isolated place. These heads, called Moai by the islanders, remain a mystery no historical record of their construction, written or oral, exists today, even though there are nearly 900 of them. These heads are about 13 feet tall and weigh about 14 tons each. Could these heads and buried bodies be the depictions of giants? Many theories about the Moai exist, but no one knows the inspiration for these giant statues. Before there were humans on Palanine, the story goes that a battle was fought between the gods and the giants. Traces of the giants' demise continue to be seen to this day. Whenever torrents swell with rain and excessive water breaks their banks and floods the fields, they say that even now in gullies and ravines, the people discover bones of immeasurable enormity, like men's carcasses, but far bigger, according to the Greek historian Solonus in AD 200. The ancient Greeks told stories of giants describing them as flesh and blood creatures who lived and died 
and whose bones could be found coming out of the ground where they were buried long ago. Indeed, even today, large and surprisingly human-like bones can be found in Greece. Modern scientists understand such bones to be the remains of mammoths, mastodons, and woolly rhinoceros that once lived in the region. But ancient Greeks were largely unfamiliar with these massive animals, and many believed that the enormous bones they found were the remains of human-like giants. Any non-human traits in the bones were thought to be due to the grotesque anatomical features of giants. According to Greek myth, the giants were the children of Uranus and Gaia, but were also never born. Afraid the giants would be too powerful, Uranus would not allow them to be born, imprisoning them in Gaia's womb. Uncomfortable, Gaia convinced her older son Kronos to attack Uranus. He did, and the blood that spilled on Gaia released the giants from their prison. Cronus took power but was soon overthrown by the god Zeus. The giants were enraged by the defeat of their savior and brother and they took up trees as clubs and boulders as missiles, waging war on Zeus and the other Greek gods. But the giants were ultimately defeated and buried under mountains where their tormented shivers were said to cause earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The people of Tingis, modern-day Tangier, Morocco, once boasted that their city's founder was a giant named Antaeus, who was buried in a mound south of town. To test the claim, Roman soldiers dug into the mound in 81 BC. Much to their surprise, an enormous skeleton surfaced, which they then reburied with great honors. Throughout antiquity, stories of giants, their bones, and other relics were found and later reburied, leaving no evidence of the human people they encountered. Since giants were often thought of as evil or enemies, their remains were discarded with no thought to how important the remains could be, or destroyed to prevent the spirits of the giants from returning. So evidence of giants are few and far between. Over 1,000 accounts of seven foot and taller skeletons have reportedly been unearthed from ancient burial sites over a 200 year period in North America. Newspaper accounts, town and county historians, letters, scientific journals, diaries, photos, and Smithsonian ethnology reports have carefully documented this. These skeletons have been reported from coast to coast with strange anatomical anomalies such as a double row of teeth, jawbones so large as to fit over the face of the finder, and elongated skulls documented in virtually every state. Smithsonian scientists identified at least 17 skeletons that stood at over 7 feet in their annual reports, including one example that was 8 feet tall, and a skull with a 36-inch circumference reported from Anna, Illinois in the Smithsonian Annual Report of 1873. The average human skull is about 20 inches in circumference. The Smithsonian Institute is mentioned dozens of more times as the recipient of enormous skeletons from across the entire United States. The skeletons mentioned no longer seem to exist, regardless of their actual size and the remaining ones that were on display were removed and repatriated by the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. This presents a moral and ethical conundrum in terms of trying to ascertain the proof everyone wants to see. Physical evidence of giants. In the 1890s, Professor Frederick Ward Putnam excavated some of the mounds next to Serpent Mound and found only six-foot-tall skeletons. But a postcard showing one seven-foot in height was recently rediscovered by researcher Jeffrey Wilson. 
It may have been one of those excavated by Putnam, as he was the only person to dig at the site. Ross first published this in his book, A Tradition of Giants, and it clearly states it was from Serpent Mound on the postcard, but there is still debate as to where this photo of a seven-foot skeleton was actually taken. Notice that the legs are cut off at the knees, so is seven foot what we actually see? Or is it an estimation if he had his lower legs and feet attached? Could it have been more like eight feet tall if the shins and feet were intact? In 1959, Dr. Donald Dragu, the curator for the section of man at the Carnegie Museum, unearthed a seven-foot, two-inch skeleton during the complete excavation of the Cresap Mound in northern West Virginia. Dragu published a photo of the actual skeleton in his book, so there is no doubt it was authentic. Drago joins many other university-trained anthropologists and archaeologists who reported discovering skeletons over seven feet in length in burial mounds, often with anatomical anomalies. A few of the professionals reporting these skeletal finds were Dr. Walter B. Jones, Moundsville, Alabama. He discovered a seven-foot six and many seven-footers. Dr. Forrest Clements, head of anthropology at the University of Oklahoma, discovered a six-foot skeleton. Dr. Donald A. Cradzo, Cambridge University, discovered a seven-foot, five-inch skeleton in Pittsburgh with many other large skeletons with anatomic anomalies. Dr. Brian Cummings, head of the archaeology department at the University of Arizona, considered the dean of southwestern archaeology, discovered several eight-foot skeletons. Thomas Wilson, curator of prehistoric anthropology at the Smithsonian, verified an eight-foot skeleton with massive jawbone. W.J. Holland, curator of the Carnegie Museum, unearthed an eight-foot skeleton in Pennsylvania, as reported in many scientific journals, including Scientific American. The Channel Islands off the coast of California have turned up numerous oversized skeletons. The story is intriguing and controversial, and it stars amateur archaeologist Ralph Glidden and his bizarre museum. But before the main act, a German naturalist got the story going in 1913. Dr. A.W. Furstenen reported unearthing an eight-foot-tall skeleton with artifacts such as mortar, pestles, and arrowheads on Catalina. He was told of a legend while in Mexico of a giant and noble race that lived on the island, who existed long before the white man and had since vanished. Amateur archaeologist Ralph Glidden unearthed and collected a total of 3,781 skeletons on the Channel Islands between 1919 and 1930. Working for the Hay Foundation of New York, he unearthed a 9-foot, 2-inch skeleton and several measuring over 7 feet. The article quoted a skeleton of a young girl, evidently of high rank within a large funeral urn, was surrounded by those of 64 children, and in various parts of the island, more than 3,000 other skeletons were found, practically all of the males averaging around 7 feet in height, one being 7 foot 8 inches from the top of his head to the ankle, and another being 9 feet 2 inches tall. In 1833, soldiers digging a pit for a powder magazine at Lompoc Rancho, California, hacked their way through a layer of cemented gravel and found a 12-foot sarcophagus. The skeleton of a giant man about 12 feet tall was found inside. The grave was surrounded by carved shells, huge stone axes, two spears, and thin sheets of purple mineral with quartz covering the skeleton. These were covered with unintelligible symbols. 
He had a double row of teeth, both upper and lower. The soldiers consulted a local tribe of Indians who, after going into trance, claimed they were geographically displaced Indians from the Ohio Valley area. When the natives began to attach some religious significance to the find, authorities ordered the skeleton and all the artifacts secretly reburied. In Native American tribal history, there are place names and descriptions of giants of old. All tribes have a name for them, and they were often honored. This is a list of the tribal names. It's important to note that many of these tribes did not know of each other and their stories are unique to their own tribe. Some stories are similar in nature, but describe the giants in different ways and how big that they were. Of course, some embellishment to oral traditions and stories is to be expected. Giants in Native American folklore are usually described as being 40 to 60 feet tall, large enough to throw humans into a sack or burden basket the way a human hunter would do with rabbits. In a few cases, Native American giants are described as being even more immense, being the size of the tallest pine trees, which works out to about 150 to 200 feet, and catching whales the way humans catch fish. This, of course, will cause many to dismiss the tales as fantasy, but the fact that they all have giant stories, and even name places after them, suggest there is some truth to each story, and even if it is embellished and told to teach a moral lesson to children. The Bible itself also teaches using metaphor and stories to impart a lesson of morality and ethics. All oral traditions do this, but the story itself is designed to be told as an actual historic event. However, most people don't believe in giants, but rather scoff at the idea, saying it's all just folklore that got mixed up and sensationalized by newspaper journalists. There is ample evidence within Native American mythology, genetic data, ethnological studies, scientific reports, early excavation records, first-hand accounts, and discoveries featured in newspapers and town history books to suggest otherwise. Now is the time for academia to take a look at this data and to investigate what really happened at the Smithsonian as an important chapter in human history is on the verge of being lost forever. Imagine, if you will, the possibility that at some point between the age of dinosaurs and after the Ice Age, or before the Great Floods, there evolved a race of giants who roamed and populated the world. There certainly would have been plenty of time for it. This race predated humans of our size, or perhaps lived alongside us. All cultures have a flood myth or story, and if there was a flood or some climate change, this may have contributed to the demise of giants. We may have simply overpopulated them and emerged as the dominant human-type species on Earth. We may even have wiped them out. A war that predated our recorded history would only be passed down in oral tradition. If this is true, and giants did populate the old world, what level of technology did they have? Did they create and build many of the monoliths we see today and are difficult to explain their construction? How big did they eventually get?
did humans and giants intermix, which resulted in smaller seven to nine foot humans? Bones have been found of humans this size. Generation after generation may have eventually reduced our size to the average human of today. Could the genetic attributes of them have caused the rare but very real cases of giantism in us? Some of us may very well carry the genes of that long-lost civilization. Is there definitive proof somewhere on Earth that would explain and show these magnificent humans did exist and were part of our prehistory? Has this proof already been found? and is being suppressed by our modern culture who can't handle the truth because it upsets our concept of our own past. Mainstream science has rejected the idea that giants did exist even though there is a plethora of data to suggest, if not prove, they were a part of our ancient history. These magnificent people were either humans like us, just larger, or were an ancient people that predated our modern civilization and could have been their own species. Until such physical proof can be found and tested, we may never know just who these giants were or where they fit into the technological advancements of man. It's entirely possible they could have been alien and this alone may be the reason their existence has been suppressed. Perhaps one day someone digging in a specific spot may find the remains of a giant and the discovery will not or cannot be dismissed. Ideally, if a large number of giant skeletons can be found in one place, which would suggest a tribe and not a single incident of giantism, we will have the physical proof for scientists that giants did actually exist. Until then, the data for their existence is growing from diligent researchers delving into the past.